Welcome back. In the previous step, we converted our Spring Boot context into a Spring context. We are now using pure Spring only code. So that's cool. However, there is one error that's coming up. So application context, if you see, it says application context is never closed. So one of the things we need to make sure is to close the application context. The way you can do that is by doing application context dot, nope, the close method is not really here. Actually, the close method is on the annotation config application context. So I'll say application context dot close. So that ensures that this error disappears. The other way I could have done this actually, like instead of doing this way, I can actually use the new try catch. So in Java 7, we have this new try catch, right? So I can actually put the try catch around the piece of code which wants to be automatically closed. So what would happen? In this case, the application context would automatically close even if there is any exception in this piece of code. So this is one of the cool features which is present in Java 7. So let's make use of that. And now you can see that the code is much, much more cleaner. And even if there is any exception in this piece of code, connection would get closed because this, if you look at this, it would implement something called the auto closable. Since this implements the auto closable interface, we can use it in a try. And if anything goes wrong, the close method would be called. Otherwise, everything's fine. Okay, that's point number one. The other thing which I noticed when I was migrating the other stuff. So when I was actually removing the Spring Boot and using Spring in Spring in five step CDA applications and other stuff is logger.info was not working fine. This is because we added in the pom.xml in the pom.xml in the previous step. We added in SLF for J API, but we did not add any implementation for it. So one thing we need to make sure is to add in an implementation. So let's do that. Dependency, group ID as usual, artifact ID also we would need. The longer implementation we'll use is logback classic. That's the one which Spring uses by default. So let's add that in as well. So logback classic and the group ID is a little complex. If you would want, actually you can search for logback classic dependency in Google and you should be able to find the group ID very easily. The group ID is ch.qs.logback. Now that's cool. So the application is building up. Let's wait for the whole thing to stop. And now you'd see that I've, when I do a right click, run as Java application over here, this is the CDI and here I'm making use of the logger. You can see that the log is coming out properly and also the CDI logger stuff should be printed as well. So here is the some CDI business and the DAO printed in. That's cool. So, so the same steps which we did as part of Spring in 5 steps basic application, I repeated them for CDI, component scan and scope and removed the whole thing. And these were the two things that I found out during that steps. So you can also give it a try if you want any help with this stuff, all the code is present in uh, GitHub repository, Spring Masterclass, Spring in depth. And we are right now in step 20. So that's where you should be able to easily find all the code as it is right now. Until the next step, bye-bye.